In this presentation, we will understand nested for loop concept. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The topics of this presentation are introduction to nested loops and nested for loop. So, there are a total of two topics we will discuss. First, we will understand the concept of nested loops. So, let's get started with this topic that is introduction to nested loops. So, what is a nested loop? Nested loop refers to a loop within a loop. So, if a loop is written inside another loop, then that structure is called nested loop. Now, let's look at the syntax of the nested loop structure. This is how the nested loop structure looks like. First, we need to write the outer loop statement. Then, inside that, we can write the inner loop statement. We need to add the proper indentation here in order to write the inner loop statement. Then, within this inner loop, we can write the statements that we want. So, here also, we need to add the proper indentation. And here, we need to add just one indentation. We must not add two indentations like this. If we want to write statements inside outer loop, this must be written like this. These comments can be replaced by the appropriate statements which we want to put. This is the entire structure of the nested loop. I hope it is clear. Now, let's move on to the next topic that is nested for loop. So, what is nested for loop? Nested for loop refers to a for loop within another for loop. So, if a for loop is written within another for loop, then it is called the nested for loop. Now, let's look at the example which will make us clear how a nested for loop looks like and how it works. So, let's take one example. Let's say that we have two lists, list 1 and list 2. Let's declare these two lists now. List 1 is equal to 1, 2, 3. This means that there are a total of three items in this list, 1, 2 and 3. And let's take list 2 also, which is equal to 4, 5, 6. This means that list 2 contains three items, 4, 5 and 6. Now, we have two lists, list 1 and list 2. Let's say that we want to print these items in a specific order. We want to print 1, 4 first and then 1, 5, then 1, 6, then 2, 4, then 2, 5 and then 2, 6, then 3, 4, then 3, 5 and then 3, 6. This means we need to take one item from list 1 and then one item from list 2. This is how we want to print all these items on the screen. In order to do this, we can use what we call the nested for loop. And this kind of order is possible. We can print these items in the order specified with the help of the nested for loop structure. Let's see how to do this. We need this outer for statement first for i in list 1. This for statement allows us to access each item of this list and this variable i will receive those values one at a time. Now, within this for loop, we need another for statement that is for j in list 2. Here, with the help of this for statement, we can access each item of this list and these items will be provided to variable j one at a time. Now, within this for loop, we need this print statement in order to print these values on the screen, i, comma, j. With the help of this comma operator, we will get one wide space between i and j. And after completion of this inner for loop, we just want to print a new line. So, we need this print function. With the help of this code, we would be able to get the pattern which we want. We will get 1, 4 first, then 1, 5, then 1, 6, then 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, then 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6. Now, let's execute this code line by line and let's see why do we get this kind of an output. Let's execute this line first for i in list 1. We know that with the help of this statement, we will receive 1 here in this variable i first. So, this means that variable i is now pointing to this object with value 1. Now, let's execute this for statement for j in list 2. 
After execution of this for statement, we know that variable j must point to this object with value 4. Why is that the case? Because this is the first value in list 2. Now we need to execute this complete for loop until this is finished. This is how nested for loop works. After execution of this statement, we need to go inside and execute the statements inside this for loop. Now within this for loop, we can observe one more for loop. So we first need to execute this for loop completely and then only we are allowed to execute this statement. I hope it is clear. So first we need to completely execute this for loop. Because of this, all these values will be printed along with 1. And that is why we will get 1, 4, 1, 5 and then 1, 6 on the screen first. Now let's execute these lines one by one. After execution of this line, we know that variable j will receive value 4. Now let's execute this line, print i, comma j. We know that i is 1 and j is 4. This means that 1 and 4 will be printed on the screen. So we are getting this output that is 1, 4 and we can observe this that 1 and 4 are separated by a wide space. Now after this, we need to execute this statement for j in list 2. This time j receives value 5 because this is the next value in list 2. Now let's execute this statement. This time i is 1 and j is 5. So 1 and 5 must be printed on the screen. Now let's execute this statement. This time j receives value 6. Now let's execute this statement. We will get 1, 6 on the screen. Now we are done with this inner for loop. Because we have read all these items of this list too. This means now we need to execute this statement. After execution of this statement, we will get a new line here. At this point, we can say this, that we are done with the body of the outer for loop. This means now this statement will be executed. This time variable i will receive value 2. And just like the previous case, the inner for loop will execute for all these values. This means that along with value 2, 4, 5 and 6 will be displayed on the screen. So at this point, 2, 4, 2, 5 and 2, 6 are displayed. As all these values are displayed, the inner for loop is completed and this print statement will be executed. We'll get a new line here. Then after this again, this statement will be executed and this time variable i will receive value 3. And along with this value, 4, 5 and 6 will be displayed. So we will get 3, 4, 3, 5 and 3, 6 on the screen. Then again, because of this print statement, we will get a new line here. So this is the output that we will get on the screen and this is what we want. With this, I hope it is clear how outer for loop along with inner for loop works and how it displays pattern like these on the screen. Nested for loop structure has the capability to display different types of patterns and we will learn how to display different patterns in our subsequent presentations. So with this, I hope it is clear how this entire program works and the concept of nested for loop is now clear. So with this we can say that we are done with this topic, nested for loop and this means that we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.